most probably classes will be in english only please try to understand if you are not getting the point you just let me know through the chat so that i can understand and i can repeat again okay so classes will be in english so we'll continue with the topic that is collection of specimens okay so specimens means what specimen means it is like uh, we will collect the sample to diagnose the disease right to diagnose the disease so that can be anything so that can be anything in the sense depends on the condition we will collect the sample to diagnose the disease condition so we'll see the different types of uh, specimens okay so through which what is specimen so what is specimen means we will collect the uh, like uh, tissue or blood or sputum or urine to diagnose the disease condition so we'll call it as a specimen okay we'll call it as a specimen so we'll see the what are the types of specimens okay what are the types of specimens so there are different types of specimens are there uh, those are the like urine blood sputum and stool so these all we will collect according to the condition according to the disease condition we will choose the uh, which is required that only we will uh, select for the diagnosis purpose so here urine sample collection is there and blood sample collection sputum and stool so these are the different kind of specimens by using this this kind of specimens we will identify the what are all the abnormalities are happening in the urine okay so urine uh, how, what are the abnormalities are happening in the urine we can detect and with the blood is there any blood component changes we can uh, uh, identify with the blood test and the uh, sputum also and as well as stool also right so one by one we will discuss in detail okay one by one we'll discuss in detail first one what is urine and what is it contain what it contain so what is urine so before going to diagnosis for about, by using the urine first what we should do we have to be know the what is urine exactly okay now so it is a water is yes it no it is a water so how urine will be formed means with the help of the kidney with the help of the kidney urine will form right so here so kidney kidney is a retroperitoneal organ right it is a retroperitoneal organ so kidney is a retroperitoneal organ which is important to production of the urine right so so kidney is a retroperitoneal organ retroperitoneal important question retroperitoneal organ so retroperitoneal organ and it is in kidney shape right sorry it is in bean shape a shape uh, in which shape it is present means in the kidney shape. so here kidney in which shape it is there means it is in uh, bean shape organ it is a bean shape organ and it weighs like so what is the weight weight of this kidney is like in males so in males it is like 150 grams yes or no so in males it is 150 grams and when comes to the female when comes to the female it is 130 grams 130 grams so it is the weight of the each kidney okay it is the weight of the kidney according to male and according to female so it is a retroperitoneal organ kidney is a retroperitoneal organ okay so here it is forming the urine right it is a forming the urine so here there is a right and left uh kidneys so right and left kidneys are there so here right is just uh, just lower than the left why it is means there is a uh, uh, right side liver is there so right side liver is there so because of that right side uh, kidney is lower than the left side kidney okay left side kidney okay right side right kidney lower then left kidney okay so why why this right kidney is lower than the left kidney means there is a in right side there is a liver right so because of that here we'll notice the right side kidney is lower than the left side kidney and it is protected by the these kidneys are protected by the 11th and 12th ribs okay 11th and 12th ribs by with the help of the 11th and 12th ribs it is protected okay it will be protected so here it is as uh, where it is located where kidney is located means so sacral region okay where it is developed means in the sacral region and it expanded towards the lumbar region okay now so here 
kidney so kidney where it is located and means uh, where it is development takes place means in the sacral region okay in the sacral region and comes to the lumbar region okay lumbar region uh, we will notice the expand of the kidney expand of the kidney we will notice in the lumbar region okay so here sacral region kidney development will be takes place and comes to the lumbar region expand of the kidney we will notice expand of the kidney we will notice so this is the basic anatomy of the kidneys okay this is the basic anatomy of the kidney so here we had seen the where kidney actually located and what is the weight of the kidney and which shape it is present okay what is the shape of the kidney also we had seen right and then we'll notice we'll see the urine formation okay there is a urine formation process okay urine physiology of urine how it will be takes place means first first step is ultra filtration what is the first step ultra filtration ultra filtration what is the first step ultra filtration and second step is that reabsorption 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 and third one is the tubular secretion tubular secretion so this is the physiology of urine formation this is the physiology of urine formation so here ultra filtration so ultra filtration means completely what are the uh, electrolytes and proteins carbohydrate uh, proteins and all is there in the blood right so those are all reabsorption will be takes place okay absorption will be takes place then after what will be happen reabsorption so what is the water content in the urine so that will be reabsorption takes place in the proximal convoluted tube and distal convoluted tube so maximum most of the amount of uh, this fluid will be reabsorption takes place in the proximal convoluted tube okay okay so here yeah, reabsorption most of the reabsorption where it will be takes place means in the proximal convoluted tubes okay so we know the tubules right you know the tubules so proximal convoluted tube and distal con loop of henle distal convoluted tube and collecting duct so like this there are four types of tubules we will notice in the nephron so nephron is a structural and functional unit of the kidney right so there will be a filtration will be takes place okay after filter after that what will be happen tubular secretion is it clear to everyone so in the physiology of urine formation there are three steps okay there are three steps those are ultra filtration first step is that ultra filtration and second step reabsorption and third step is that tubular secretion okay these are the three steps which are included in the physiology of urine formation please write down everyone so nephron we know that that is a structural and functional unit of the kidney what is the structural and functional unit of the kidney is that nephron so in the nephron we will notice the uh, capillary glomerular filtration also we will take place right what is the gfr what is the normal gfr okay so gfr what is this so glomerular filtration rate so per minute we will notice the 155 ml per minute so how much ml of glomerular filtration will be takes place in the glomerulus is that it is 125 ml per minute 120 m and 125 ml per minute we will see the glomerular filtration rate per minute per minute so we'll see what it contains what usually normal urine contains what are the normal values we will notice in the urine so those are like first parameter is that urine so what is urine so it is uh, urine in which color so straw color or pale yellow color we will see yes or no so urine will be in the color like straw or pale yellow color and next specific gravity so what is the normal specific gravity of the urine is that 1.010 to 1.030 so this is the normal specific gravity of the urine these are all normal values should be known to everyone because uh, by according to this normal values only we will attend the questions so that we have to be very clear with the normal values okay so then 
pH of the urine it is 4.5 to 7.8 okay so what is the pH normal of normal pH of the urine is that 4.5 to 7.8 and creatinine very important right so creatinine normal values are very important this is 0.7 to 1.3 mg per deciliter okay mg per deciliter so very important and next so this is the question is that whether wbc rbc bilirubin ketones and sugars whether present in the urine or not it is very important so in abnormality conditions only usually in the urine these elements or these parameters are not present in the urine in normal person when it comes to the abnormal conditions like glomerular filtration problems like uh, polynephritis glomerulonephritis like that in those cases we will notice the presence of uh, rbc wbc and bilirubin ketones or sugar so like that in the diabetes mellitus we will notice the ketone bodies in uh, urine right so these are all elements will not present in the urine in the normal person so the person who is in normal state so in that person urine we will not this kind of elements like bilirubin rbc wbc ketone and sugar clear so this important point please note, note down this is very important point in case of abnormalities like glomerulonephritis and pyelonephritis and diabetes mellitus diabetic ketoacidosis in those cases only we will notice the these uh, parameters in the urine normal individual in in the normal individual urine we will not see this kind of parameters and blood urea nitrogen what is the full form of one means blood urea nitrogen so what is the normal value 7 to 20 mg per deciliter okay so these are all the normal parameters which are present in the urine so these normal parameters should known to everyone to uh, to attend the questions well you have to be know the normal values of the urine okay next so when and how to collect the urine very important this question is very important when and how to collect the urine so when comes to the urine uh, culture and sensitivity right we will collect the urine sample for culture and sensitivity so what is mean by culture and sensitivity means so here we will uh, take the urine sample to detect the which bacteria is there in that particular patient urine okay so if the person has a like uh, urinary tract infections and it is in very severe stage okay otherwise uh, bladder in bladder infection or urethral infections means in that time we will go for the this uh, uh, 24 hours urine examination in that we will check the uh, bacteria which is growing in that particular urine right so in that time what we have to do it is a question very important question so when you will collect the sample uh, for the 24 hours urine examination like that they may ask you the question so that is mid stream urine when to collect mid stream urine means early morning sample mid stream urine means what first pass first uh, during the voiding what you need to do first void should be avoid and middle one should be collected okay first urine sample so what we should do you have to be uh, avoid the first some first voiding part and middle of that you have to be collect as a sample so that we can avoid the the bacteria which is present over the perineal area so that will be wash out that will be go off so that we can collect the midstream uh, urine so that is very important to identify the bacteria which is affecting that particular infection clear so first what you need to explain to the client if the person on the 24 hours urine examination we need to strictly instruct them to collect the urine only midstream urine midstream urine means first urine portion should be void and middle of the urine should be collect okay so that is important point very important point and next if the patient on catheter patient is on the catheter so how to collect the sample from that particular patient so how to collect it is with the help of the needle with the help of the needle we will collect the sample urine sample from the urinary catheter okay these two questions are very important this was these questions were asked in the previous aims exams okay please make it make it as a important okay so we we can tell them how to collect the sample 
if they are not on the catheter if they are on the particular catheter so what we need to do we need to explain the we need to collect the sample how to we have to collect the sample from the catheter that is with the help of the needle aspiration okay with the help of the needle has aspiration so before doing that what we need to do we have to clamp the uh, tube urinary tube is there no so this tube should be clamped before collecting the urine sample this tube should be clamp this tube should be uh, should be clamp and from here we will in uh, you from there we will take the urine sample okay so here you can see clearly okay this question is very important from the catheter how we can collect the urine sample so they may ask you the question so please note it as important so from this catheter urinary tube first you have to be clamp this tube okay first what we should do we have to be clamp the tube then only we need to collect the sample okay otherwise what will be happen there will be a leakage of the urine may takes place so that is the reason we have to avoid the opening uh, we have to Oh, uh, clamp the urine tube. And next, so abnormal co urine color. So there are different kind of abnormal urine colors according to condition. So this is very important. And here. Uh, if the urine in the black color, okay. If the urine in the black color, so what is that indication? Means there will be a presence of old RBCs, okay. Old RBCs. Usually RBC will be uh, have the lifespan like 120 days, like yes or no? What is the normal lifespan of the RBCs? It is 120 days, okay. 120 days. So before that, old RBCs, old RBCs means excessively if the hemolysis is taking place, there are chances to be formation of RBCs, old RBCs, right? So that uh, that leads to be what? Black color urine we can notice. That leads, to, that leads to black color urine we will notice. And next, if the urine in yellow color, thick yellow color, there we had seen the pale yellow color, a normal store pale yellow color is the normal color of urine. But here, because of the multivitamin, if the person on the multivitamin, so there are chances to be passage of the yellow color, thick yellow color urine. And if the person is passing white color, okay, milky white color, okay, which color? Milky white color, if the urine is passing, means that indicates patient has infected, patient is infected with the pyuria. Okay, patient has a fungal or bacterial infections that leads to be what? Pyuria means what? Pus in the urine. What is this? Pus in the urine. So if the pus in the urine, that leads to be passage of the milky white urine. Okay, milky white urine. And next, hematuria and rifampicin. In case of the hematuria or in case of patient on the rifampicin tablets, so there are chances to be passage of the, more chances to be passage of the red, pink to red color urine. Which color? Pink to red color urine. Pink to red color urine. So here this is because of the, uh, what is mean by hematuria? What is mean by hematuria means here presence of blood in the urine. So uh, in the urine we will notice the blood clots. So that leads to be what the color of the urine changes to the red color. So why it is occur? Why this hematuria occur means that is because of the glomerulonephritis okay otherwise or pyelonephritis. In those cases there are chance of rupture of blood vessels and that leads to be hematuria or red color urine passage. If the person has a tuberculosis, if the person has a tuberculosis it is on the rifampicin tablets. So that is also leads to be what? So there will be a passage of pink to red color urine. Okay in these two cases cases we will notice the red color pink to red color urine we will notice and dyes in urine if the dyes dyes means what any colors okay if the person is had uh, taken any dyes dyes in the sense colors so that leads to be violet color violet color we will notice and concentrated or jaundice in case of concentrated means in case of dehydration if the person is not taking 
um, much intake of the water so that leads to be what which color orange color urine so concentrated urine where we will notice means in case of dehydration or less intake of in what uh, fluids also leads to be orange color urination and dilute urine diluted urine means when we can notice means uh, if the person is having the more water if person should have the at least like the three to four liters per day if he is taking more intake of water also we uh, we can notice the diluted urine so that here color of the urine is completely light yellow color light yellow color we will notice in case of over hydration to the client for example you are on the patient care and you are administering a uh, fluids to the client iv fluids uh, the uh, um the amount of the fluid should be like uh, 500 ml ns you need to be administered to the client according to the doctor advice but what you had done means you have given the 1500 ml of ns so that indicates what excessive fluid in the body so that leads to be excessive passage of the urine so in that time dilution of the urine we can notice because of over hydration because of over hydration so these are the different color codings according to the disease conditions according to disease conditions we can notice the abnormal urine colors important this rifampicin okay this is the important question if the person is on rifampicin medicine which kind of color we will notice with the urine like that they may ask you they may ask you the question okay now so make it as a important is it uh, understanding understandable to everyone any doubts any doubts is it clear actually ga manam em anukunnamo anante meek english lo exam untundi so meer andaru kuda english ki koncham adopt avvali ane concept toni manam english lo classes start chesamu so evarikaina ardham kavatledu anante please let me know we will discuss again and again is it clear to everyone any doubts okay so next so we had completed with the urine sample collection how to collect the urine sample uh, sample we had seen and what are the normal values of the urine also we had seen right and we had seen about the abnormal urine colors also according to the disease conditions and next we are moving to the blood sample collection how to collect the blood sample so before going to that we should know the what is blood actually yes or no so what is the blood it is a liquid connective tissue blood is a liquid connective tissue liquid connective tissue okay blood is a liquid connective tissue and it can it is uh, like it has the different components right blood has a different components like rbc wbc and platelets right so here we'll see one by one so why blood is in red color means that is because of the hemoglobin why blood is in red color so that is because of the hemoglobin so blood in the red color right so what is the normal ph of the blood normal ph of the blood it is 7.35 to 7.45 okay so the hemoglobin because of hemoglobin blood in red color blood in red color so what is the normal ph of the blood very important 7.35 to 7.45 it is the normal ph of the blood so we'll see here urine uh, uh, like where do blood cells form so next is the uh, where blood cells will be formed so mostly we know that blood cells will form in the bone marrow only right in the red bone marrow we will notice the blood cell formation so there are different uh, types of cells are there those are the rbc wbc and platelets rbc wbc and platelets so these three types of cells are form in the bone marrow only in the adult when comes to the like embryonic stage and fetal stage where do 
the blood cells will be formed okay so where do blood cells will be formed so here when comes to the embryo in embryonic stage the blood cells form in the yolk sac okay where yolk sac so here the blood cells will be form okay so here in in case of embryo in the embryonic stage from where the blood cells will be forming in from the yolk sac so where from this yolk sac will be forming in the from the inner cell mass okay in from the inner cell mass all uh, here um, after fertilization okay so so before fertilization we'll notice the different cells or stages like morula blastocyte like Yes or no? So in the blastocyte, we'll notice we'll uh, blastocyte is divided into the two types. So that is inner cell mass and outer cell mass. Inner cell mass and outer cell mass. Okay. So from this out inner cell mass, from this inner cell mass, so here embryo will be from fetus and yolk sac. okay and uh, these things are will be formed from this inner cell mass so here yolk sac what it will do during embryonic stage it will produce the blood cells it will produce the blood cells so that is the reason yolk sac we will call it as a fetal hematopoiesis okay fetal hematopoiesis fetal hematopoiesis fetal hematopoiesis why we are calling it as a fetal hematopoiesis means up to 21 days up to 21 days what this yolk sac will do it will produce the blood cells to the embryo okay so that embryo will be get develop okay so every organ every cell should require the blood supply if there is no blood supply so the cells will not be survive right so here embryo want to be get develop so there should be a requirement of the blood circulation so that blood cells will be formed by the yolk sac so that process we will so that we will call this yolk sac as a fetal hematopoiesis okay so note it as a important up to 12 weeks up to 12 weeks this hemato uh, yolk sac will produce the blood cells to the embryo then after so liver at the 24 weeks of gestational age okay at the 24 weeks of gestational age what it will uh, how the blood cell will be formed with the help of the liver with the help of the liver blood cells will be form after 24 weeks of the gestational age clear so here yolk sac is a fetal hematopoietic hemato poises and here after 24 weeks of gestational age liver will be takes place to produce the blood cells clear so usually in the adult usually in the adult where do from the blood cells will be formed from the bone marrow from the bone marrow is it clear to everyone yolk sac and one more is the liver okay one more is the liver so then after bone marrow will be takes place uh, takes place to form a blood cells is it clear to everyone so next so already we had discussed that hemoglobin with the help of the hemoglobin only the blood the, the blood in the red color right so here hemoglobin hem means what globin means what hem is a like iron and globe is globin is a protein right so here hemoglobin has a different types it has a different types how it will be like how this hemoglobin will form in with the help of the this alpha and beta chains alpha and beta chains so baby when the feed when the embryonic period is there there how the hemoglobin will form in with the help of the gover 1 and 2 and portland 1 and 2 okay so with the help of these chains in during the embryonic period of the hemoglobin will be formed but when comes to the fetal life we know that embryo is different and fetus is different right so when comes to the fetal life how the hemoglobin will form in with the help of the 
alpha to alpha chains and to gamma chains to alpha and to gamma chains and after birth after birth of the baby will notice the hemoglobin so how this hemoglobin will form in with the help of the alpha 2 and beta 2 chains so there are two types of hemoglobins after birth those are the hemoglobin a and hemoglobin a2 okay hemoglobin a1 and hemoglobin a2 so here hemoglobin a1 is formed by the alpha 2 and beta 2 chains alpha 2 and beta 2 chains and hemoglobin a2 formed by the alpha 2 and delta 2 chains so after 6 months after 6 months of the birth of the baby so what will be happens these two delta chains are replaced with the beta chains two beta chains so if these two beta chains synthesis is impaired means then we can notice the sickle cell anemia thalassemia like that conditions we will notice so after 6 months of the birth after 6 months of the birth what we will notice there is a changes in the hemoglobin so in that time as like adult how they are having the two alpha chains and two beta chains those will be form after 6 months of the age clear so these are the types of the hemoglobin according to the chain according to the chain and, and depends on their age so embryonic period we will notice different kind of chains and fetal different and after birth also we will notice the different types of chains okay so what is the normal hemoglobin in adult what is the normal hemoglobin in adult so hemoglobin in adult it is in the males we we'll notice the 14 to 16 grams per deciliter and comes to the female we'll notice the 12 to 14 grams per deciliter but when comes to the fetus or newborn baby fetus or newborn baby so what is the normal range of hemoglobin is that 18 to 20 mg per deciliter so make it as a mg mg per deciliter sorry so in the adult in the adult hemoglobin is in the males it is 14 to 16 mg per deciliter in the female it is 12 to 14 mg per deciliter when comes to the newborn or fetal it is it is like 18 to 20 mg per deciliter so why it is more in the newborn or fetal life means why it is more means after umbilical cord okay after baby comes what we have to do we need to cut the umbilical cord right but what we will do we will wait for the at least minimum 22 minutes minimum 2 minutes we will wait to minimum 2 minutes we will wait to cut the umbilical cord so that time an 80 to 100 ml of blood will reaches to the baby through umbilical cord so that we will notice the 18 to 20 mg per deciliter hemoglobin in the newborn babies clear newborn babies so these are the normal values of hemoglobin then comes to the composition of blood so what are the compositions we'll notice in the blood so blood means what plasma and serum will be there right and proteins also are there so how can we differentiate the plasma and serum so in the plasma okay in the plasma and serum so what is the difference what is the difference between plasma and serum is that so here plasma is having the clotting factors okay Pl plasma is having the clotting factors and here serum is not having the clotting factor so that is the major difference between the plasma and serum plasma and serum so here clotting factors are present and here clotting factors are factors are absent so that is the main difference between plasma and serum and plasma proteins also present in the blood so what are the plasma proteins so here we'll notice like uh, albumin globulin and fibrinogen so these are the different types of proteins we will notice in the plasma so here you can see the different types of proteins which are present in the plasma so in the plasma we'll notice the different kind of protein so what are those means here albumin albumin globulin and one more is the fibrinogen so here albumin so we know that albumin maintaining the oncotic pressure in the blood right so it is maintaining the oncotic pressure and here globulin 
so glo uh, globulin means what immunoglobulins we are already we had uh, heard many times right so here globulins means immunoglobulins the formation of immunoglobulins uh, uh, antibodies also present in the plasma and next fibrinogen so what is the function of this fibrinogen is the clotting function yes or no formation of clot will be takes place by the fibrinogen okay so these are the three proteins which are present in the plasma very important question so make it as the important what are the different types of proteins present in the plasma is that first one is the albumin and next is the globulin and fibrinogen these three are the plasma proteins which are present in the plasma clear so plasma and serum has a different is that in the plasma we will notice the clotting clotting factors when comes to the serum it doesn't have any clotting factor so that is the major difference so nursing officer results will be soon i think so because uh, today will be government will be formed no so after that we came to know that what the decision they had they had taken already so we have to wait for uh, one week i think we need to wait for to one week after that we may get the uh, not like information about our results is it clear all nursing officers who are in live yes so next we'll see the whole blood so whole blood here whole blood is having the plasma already we had discussed and it contains the three types of cells already we had discussed right so again we'll see so here when comes to the cells which are present in the blood are those in the plasma the cells will be present so leukocytes platelets and erythrocytes so rbc wbc and platelets and comes to the leukocyte again wbc is divided into two types those are the granulocytes and agranulocytes granulocytes and agranulocytes so what is the difference between granulocyte and agranulocyte is that when in the granulocyte granules are present granules are present in the white blood cell so white blood cells we will notice the granules okay so that uh, where we can notice this granules is that neutrophils basophils eosinophils and comes to the a granulocytes a granulocytes means what absence of the granule so based on the presence of granules white blood cells are divided into two types those are the granulocytes and a granulocytes under granulocytes three types are there those are the neutrophils basophils and eosinophils so you can write it as a neb okay you can write it as a neb for easy remembering that is neb nebulization yes or no so neb means what neutrophils eosinophils and basophils and a granulocytes again it is divided into two types those are the lymphocytes and monocytes under lymphocytes again two types are there those are the b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes okay b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes so these are the different types of the wbc okay so here platelets and erythrocyte doesn't have the nucleus okay so here erythrocytes means rbc and platelets are not having the nucleus but wbc leukocytes are having the nucleus so that is the reason we will notice the proliferation of the cell so in cancer cancer which cancer we will notice only leukemia white blood cell cancer only we are noticing so what is the main reason behind that is that so wbc is having the nucleus so that the cells are proliferating the number of cells are increasing and size of the cells are increasing so only wbc cells only we are noticing the cancer but platelets and erythrocytes are not having the cancer because they are not having the nucleus clear and here so plasma so what pla what plasma contains means here amino acid nutrients proteins nitrogenous electrolytes gases so everything these are all present in the plasma okay so blood will uh, divided into like uh, proteins plasma proteins and next one is the plasma and serum 
so what this plasma contain is that these are all substances okay these are all substances are present in the plasma but in the serum it is a liquid form of the plasma after coagulation after blood coagulation so here in the test tube if you have taken the blood sample so so after clotting so what is the fluid present over the uh, that clotted part so that we will call it as a serum because it doesn't have the clotting factor so that is the reasoning it's not having that function of the clot but when comes to the plasma it will be settled down with the blood cells because it has the what what it has fibrinogen it is a clotting factor so that is the reason it will be settled down after clotting the fluid which is producing we'll call it as a serum clear is it clear to everyone so this is whole blood whole blood contains blood cells plasma and serum so in the plasma we will notice the like gases nitrogenous waste and electrolytes electrolytes in the sense <coughs> excuse me what will come potassium sodium and all will come right so those all electrolytes are present in the plasma only and gases like gases means what bicarbonate carbon dioxide oxygen so these all will be present in the plasma and amino acids nutrients and proteins so important very important so what are the plasma proteins there are chances to be asked in the exam or indirect question also there are chances to be asked okay so we'll see one by one okay we'll see one by one rbc so rbc also known as the erythrocyte we know very well right so what is the normal range of this rbc is that 4.5 to 6.2 6.2 million okay million so here we will notice in the male and comes to the female 4.0 to 5.5 million so what is the shape of rbc it is in biconcave shape see here so it is in biconcave shape right so it is a biconcave shape exam uh, rbc is in the biconcave shape what is the life span of rbc is that 120 days when comes to the newborn baby one comes to the newborn baby what is the life span of rbc is that 60 to 80 days okay 60 to 80 days so it is the normal life span of the rbc is in the newborn baby when comes to the adult it is 120 days okay so what is the graveyard of rbc it is a spleen spleen is the graveyard of rbcs okay so here the destruction the destructed rbcs uh, which are there so they will be stored in the spleen so that will be uh, there the cells will be engulfed okay then after new blood cells will be formed and next white blood cells so white blood cells it have the nucleus right rbc and platelets are not having the nucleus so here rbc you can note uh, wbc you can note here so lobed by with the lobes we can divide uh, we can see the wbcs so it is also known as a leukocytes wbc white blood cells also known as a leukocyte so what is the normal value 4000 to 11000 okay so 4000 to 11000 million cells we will notice and life span is like 10 to 10 to 12 days what is the life span of wbc is the 10 to 12 days so in this there are types yes or no so what are the types are there neutrophils are there already we had seen and basophils eosinophils okay so these are the granulocytes and lymphocytes and monocytes are the a granulocytes okay a granulocytes these are the a granulocytes so here neutrophils and monocytes are having the macrophagic okay macro or like uh, killing the first line defense will we'll call it as a first line defense so these neutrophils neutrophils and monocytes will call it as a first line defense why we are calling it, it as a first line defense is that when the foreign body enters in our body immediately these neutrophils and monocytes get will will get activate 
to kill that particular antigen so that we will calling these two as a first line defense first line defense very important question neutrophils and monocytes these two are the first line defense next platelet so platelets for what is the function of this platelets is that it will clot the blood blood clotting process will be take up by this blood uh, platelets only so here platelets also known as your thrombocytes okay thrombocytes and normal value is that 1.5 to 4.5 lakh okay what is the normal value is the 1.5 to 4.5 lakh and function we know well that is the blood clotting okay blood clotting will be takes place by this platelets only so we'll see the process so how the coagulation process will be takes place if we blood want to be get the clotting so there should be a requirement of clotting factors right there are different types of clotting factors are there certain clotting factors so these certain clotting factors are included in the process of coagulation so what are the phases we will see if, uh, in the coagulation process phases are like vasoconstriction so after injury after injury so bleed blood clots will be takes place right so during that time what the platelets will do it will have the function like vasoconstriction so the blood cells which are there that injured part so there will be a constriction of blood cells will be blood vessels will be takes place and that's the plugging of platelets so so that bleeding part so which is that that bleeding part so here first first process is that here vasoconstriction will be takes place then after platelets will be plugged so here the platelet aggregation we will notice okay so then after what will be happens the blood coagulation the clotting will be takes place here the gel like process the gel formation we will notice with the platelet plug okay so here first vasoconstriction to stop the bleeding what this platelets will do means first vasoconstriction will be takes place then after the platelets will be aggregate in that particular injured area and then after the clotting factors which are there the 13 clotting factors will be take function to form the blood coagulation clear so this is these are the three phases which are no, which are important to have the coagulation process for this coagulation process there will be a requirement of certain clotting factors if there is absence of any clotting factor like uh, eighth clotting factor if this eighth clotting factor is absent we will notice the hemophilia okay so here hemophilia why it is occurring means because of absence of this eighth clotting factor if this uh, eighth clotting factor is absent means we will notice the hemophilia hemophilia okay so like that among this 13 clotting factors if any clotting factor is absent or if it is not working properly that coagulation will not takes place well So how to collect the sample? So after after taking the sample, what you need to do? We have to be placed in the vacutainers for the bio uh, bio, uh, for the laboratory examination, right? So here, uh, according to the test type, there are different types of vials are there. So those are like first PT, APTT, and D dimer. So these test, okay? For this test, which color vial we will use, okay? So which color light blue color vial we will use very important in in case of ibqs okay in ibqs there are chances to be asked okay so they will show the image and for this uh, uh, light blue color vial which test we will do for um, uh, blood collection we will take and we will put that blood in the vial like uh, light blue for which test we will use this light blue vial like that they may ask you the question so here for the pt aptt and d dimer so here sodium citrate will use in this test tube okay in in this vacutainer sodium citrate we will use it is a anticoagulant it is a anticoagulant okay so in this vacutainer in this vacutainer we will collect the sample right so before collecting that sample this vacutainer contain this sodium citrate this sodium 
citrate so what it uh, function of the sodium citrate is that it is a anti coagulant anti coagulant for the pt aptt and d dimer if doctor uh, ordered like uh, send the sample of pt aptt and d dimer like that they have written in the uh, orders doctor orders means what what we have to do immediately we will take this blue color vial blue, blue color vacutainer for the sample collection okay for that uh, for that we will select this blue color vial and we will write the sample and we will send it to the laboratory so by using by seeing this vacutainer so immediately you need to identify that for what test we will use this vacutainer that is very important so they will ask the exam that they will give vacutainer and in which diagnosis in which uh, a uh, blood test we will use this vacutainer like that they may ask the question okay so please remember in case of ibqs okay so imaged based questions imaged based questions they uh, will be asked in the norset exam right so important and next is the red color if the uh, the vacutainer has a red color cap so in that in that vial what the uh, test we will do which test we will do is that hiv hbsag hcv and uh, di uh, like vitamin d2 and d3 and all serum test all serum test we will do with this do in the uh, like uh, we will uh, collect the sample in this red color vial okay it is a plain it is a plain so in this we will not add any coagulants in this uh, red color cap vial vacutainer we will not add any additives okay so plain tube we will give we will in the plain tube we will collect the sample hiv hbsag hcv and vitamin d2 d3 all serum test these all we will collect okay so with in which vial in which vacutainer is that red color okay red color cap it contains in that only we will collect the sample is it clear my dear nursing officers any doubt so far so please try to understand in english so far we had also discussed many of the classes in telugu but uh, but now onwards we will be having most of the classes in english only so please try to adapt the language and try to understand so next gold color gold color vacutainer so this vacutainer contain which color see this vacutainer contain gold color cap right so if the uh, doctor has ordered you that uh, collect the sample like uh, uh, for the vitamin b12 folate or immunology and genetic uh, therapeutic drug monitoring so therapeutic drug monitoring means what digoxin lithium like that if you are giving any tablets to the client so we need to monitor the therapeutic dose of that particular client if it is have falling on the toxicity or not we we have to be no so here what we will do we will collect the sample in the gold color gold color vacutainer so this gold vacutainer having the gold color cap very important so you have to be remember there are no other ways to remember you need to be by heart it so which color vacutainer uh, in which color vacutainer we will collect the which kind of test so that is very important and next in blue color in green color vacutainer so what are all the test we will collect blood alcohol chromosome studies rft tb spot so these test all we will do in, with the green color vacutainer so in that particular green color vacutainer we will pour the sample for, uh, and send it to the laboratory for diagnosis next lavender so most commonly we will use and most of the like cbp es or basic examinations basic examination like like uh, cbp es or and uh, malaria parasite and hba one c g6 pd cd4 cd8 count uh, and electroporosis 
so these are all test hemophoresis sorry okay he um, hb electrophoresis so these all exam the test all we will uh, collect the sample in the lavender color vacutainer so in this important so regular common examinations are like cbp and esr and malaria parasite and hb a1c so these are all the common examinations right so here where we will collect the sample means in the green uh, in the lavender color vacutainer so in the lavender color vacutainer if we add any uh, like uh, uh, like anticoagulants so here in the ED, here lavender color vacutainer we will add the edta okay here edta we will add it is a anticoagulant so if we want to do the test of the cbp esr and uh, malaria parasite and hb a1c and all so here blood should not be get the coagulant so to avoid that we will add uh, the vacutainer contains vacutainer contains this edta edta it contains so that blood will not get clot and next gray color so in the gray color vacutainer so what we will do so here what for what we will use this gray color vacutainer is that glucose lactic acid and lactate so important so glucose so where we will collect in which vial or vacutainer we will collect uh, collect the sample for glucose detection so the glucose like uh, we, what we will do fasting blood sugar levels we will do yes or no fbsn and post lunch also we will do right so in these two test we will uh, sample we will take in the gray color g for green and g for gray color okay g for green and g for sorry g for glucose and g for gray color so in this vacutainer we will collect the sample for glucose detection in the blood so next so royal blue royal blue plain so here zinc copper aluminum selenium so this all will uh, the sample will uh, pour in that blue color royal blue color plain and next arsenic so here you have to be notice so whether they, they have given you the plain if they have given you the plain vial okay or vacutainer so you need to be identify whether they gave you the plain or edta added if that is plain vial of the royal blue so then we will collect the sample for zinc copper aluminum and selenium okay so if they have given you in the exam with the edta then what you have to do you need to be check the color as well as the edta with the edta they have added you or otherwise they have given you the arsenic just they have given you the arsenic cadmium and mercury lead and manganese so this you need to see and according to that you need to take the answer okay so if they gave you uh, given the given in the exam arsenic cadmium or mercury or lead or manganese among this any one if they have given in the exam so you need to be choose the answer is that royal blue with the edta okay so that is that the, the different you have to be identified so next is sputum sample collection so how to collect the sputum sample so most probably the sputum sample we will collect for the detection of afv right yes or no if the person has a tb or not if the person is having the cough is like more than uh, more than 3 weeks then we can uh, instruct the client to go for the sputum examination if the person has the cough more than 3 weeks okay so in that time what we will do we will instruct the go for instruct the go for sputum examination so when when to collect the sputum so early morning sample is very important so early morning sample only should be collected by the client so before collecting the sample the person should wash the mouth cleanly so he have to be wash the mouth cleanly cleansely and then after only you need to be collect the sample so how much amount of ml we uh, patient should be collect means 15 ml how much ml the sputum collection if the person is uh, collecting the sample means we need to instruct them to collect the approximately 15 ml of the sample so early morning sample is very much uh, 
uh, means uh, accurate accurate values we will get because our, uh, overnight the bacteria growth will be takes place so early morning that sputum contains the more of the bacteria so that is the reason we will instruct the client to collect the early morning sample <coughs> So the amount of the blood depends on the test. Approximately we will collect the sample like 3 to 5 ml only and more than that we will not take. Okay, so the collection of the blood and amount of the blood depends on the test we will take. Clear? So here, so for the sputum examination, so for the culture and sensitivity also we will collect the sample. So culture and sensitivity means what? We will take the sample and we will check for the bacterial growth, whether the gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria so for that what we will do we will collect the sample and we will uh, colonize that uh, sample uh, for the bacterial growth for three days then after observe for the morphology of the bacteria like what is the shape of the bacteria whether it is the gram positive or gram negative so we will identify and according to that that doctors will be advised the are uh, antibiotic to the client if the person has the like resistance to that particular bacteria means that particular medicines will not advise to the client so other than that uh, medicines will be advised to the client by the doctor okay so here sample how much amount of sample should be collected means 15 ml and early morning sample is the most accurate okay and here so before collecting the sample we need to instruct the client to wash the mouth cleanly and then we need to instruct the client to have the deep breathing okay deep breathing and deep cough deep cough so that he will uh, produce the effective cough like uh, sputum it will be come out if the person is having the uh, deep breathing and deep cough so it may, we may get the like 15 ml of the sputum so that you need to be instruct to the client and here so it is about the stool so stool examinations also we will do right in case of the bacterial or fungal infections or viral infections so most probably for the culture and sensitivity we will take the stool examinations otherwise to detect the polio also it is a it occurs through the fecal oral route right so polio how it will be occur through the fecal oral route so in case of to detect the polio also what we will do we will collect the sample we will collect the stool sample so this stool sample should be collected in the sterile container so before doing any procedure we have to be that take that equipment uh, that particular equipment in the sterile form only and the procedure also should be continued with the sterile only so here so the stool sample the amount of stool is like 15 to 30 grams so the how much amount of uh, stool we will collect for the test is that 15 to 30 grams and here so if the occult blood, so if in the uh, stool blood is there, so immediately we need to be informed to the doctor. So occult blood means what the growth of the uh, microorganisms are there or not, you need to be identified and informed to the doctor. Clear? So here culture sample and collect in sterile container. So in every, every culture like blood culture, urine culture, sputum culture or stool culture, whatever. So the sterile container should be used for the uh, collection of the sample so here if the person has the disorders with the like uh, person has a continuously diarrhea if the person has a chronic diarrhea or peptic ulcers if a person has a black color stool so in those cases what we will do will most probably prefer this stool culture and sensitivity why it is important means to detect the the particular bacteria which is affected to the client okay clear so to detect that we will go for this stool sample collection is it clear to everyone any doubts so far Yes, is it clear to everyone any doubts? 
so this is just a basic information to you all again uh, this is a demo class and again you are having the in detail and in depth classes about this topic again so please do purchase the course okay is there any doubts is it clear to everyone please inform to your friends also and uh, for, uh, for sure you are going to be become as a successful nursing officers we are very sure about about it and we are going to be giving the quality content to you all and it it will be in the english only so please do tell to your friends and uh, all your colleagues to purchase the course okay it it is it is just a demo and here also we are giving the quality content and in depth also we are give, we are we are going to be giving okay